What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Will with Gutter Fighting Secrets. Today we're going to be talking about how to set ourselves up for success with concealed carry. Specifically about how to carry your knife on your person when you are concealing a firearm. All right, specifically a firearm, a sidearm, right? We're going undercover, deep cover, deep concealment, James Bond status. We need to conceal our firearm, but also have a knife available for a secondary weapon should we need to deploy that. Maybe something happens where we're carrying a little 380. We have seven rounds in the weapon and maybe a mag with, you know, stacked with six rounds, right? We run dry. That's it. Bada bing, bada boom. Now we got to bring our knife to bear, get it in the fight. Okay. Jeez, that's a scary thought, but like it could potentially happen. Another more realistic situation is that somebody is pinning our firearm to us. They've somehow discovered that we are armed. They are now actively pinning it to us, and we have to retain this weapon, keep it inside the holster, right? We don't want them to get it, but then we do need an option to get them the fuck off of us. Maybe we can't beat them hand to hand, so we need to bring a weapon out to bear. And we're going to talk about exactly how to do that because it's actually a lot trickier than you might think. There's some real subtleties to this art. So again, I want to reiterate this before we do get started. Number one, this is all for entertainment purposes. None of this is advice. I'm just saying like personally what I've seen people do and what I would do and this and that, like whatever. All right. Entertainment purposes only. And second of all, I really want you to be aware that, um, what I'm telling you is <laughs> over a long time of like doing this and learning about this stuff, uh, I appreciate everyone who gives me um, the thumbs up and subscribes to the channel. I appreciate it more than you know, actually, because we are a smart, small channel, but we're looking to grow. So every time that you can give us feedback that you like this stuff, very much appreciated to me. Leave a comment down below, a nice one. That would be appreciated. The mean ones, it hurts my feelings. Please, come on, guys, don't do it. I'm doing this as a public service announcement. By the way, speaking of public service announcements, gutterfightingsecrets.com is the website. Online training packages are available there, and I'm absolutely honored to bring you the training that I know that you deserve. All right, let's get started. So carrying a knife when we are concealed carry. So first of all, I always want to carry my knife on my support side, all right? So we talked about this last week when we were discussing about setting up your battle belt and putting a knife on your battle belt. This week, we're gonna be discussing um, how to set up your knife and put, up, put your knife, whatever kind of knife that you decide to carry on your body with a concealed carry platform. So I like to carry appendix. I always carry right here in appendix style. Uh, sometimes if I'm sitting for a long period of time and I'm running like a full size or even a mid size weapon, maybe I'll keep it on like a four o'clock position. Rarely do I keep it all the way on the six o'clock position back here, but um, five o'clock, sometimes I'll do that, but it, nothing really changes uh, with the positioning that we're gonna put our knife. So strong side, right side. I'm a right-handed shooter. I hold my weapon with my right dominant hand, so that's my strong side. Left side is going to be my support side. And if you're a lefty, just reverse that. Then your left hand will be your strong side and your right hand will be your support side. So in my case, and in everybody who's a right-handed person shooter's case, we're going to keep our knife in our left pocket if we're running a folding knife. There's other options that we can do as well. Now we can carry a neck knife. We can bring this out and to bear, uh, and it's highly concealed, right? It's, we don't even have to worry about a clip hanging out or reaching down into our pocket, making our hand unavailable. Somebody might stick if they know what they're doing. And forgive me real quick, I'm going to bring this out so I don't cut the shit out of myself. That would be embarrassing. If somebody knows what they're doing, like, look, if I'm fighting you and I see you, the second I see you going into your pocket, dude, I'm going to pin your hand and I'm grappling with you for all of my life, dude. And I'm going to like ramp things up tenfold from there. If I have a weapon, it's coming out like it's on, it's over, done and out. Like gentlemen's Queensbury rules are now over the second I see you reach into your fucking pocket. So that's another reason why we don't necessarily maybe want to keep things in our pocket unless we can be very discreet about it. Now, another thing we have to be cognizant of, speaking of having a knife in our pocket. So I carry um, a push button knife. I think that personally, from my experience, having a knife where you have to manually open it, it's, it takes a fine motor skills. And like, 
okay, you might be thinking like, Will, how fine of a motor skill is that? Enough that like when you're in the heat of a fucking fight or like your adrenaline is boom, 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 pumping, like your heart's pumping, like you, it's a fucking, it's harder to do than you would think. To even remember that you have it on you, number one, but number two, to like get it out and to bear, it's, it's, it's difficult enough with this push button knife. And I can carry it in the state that I live in legally. Again, I have a license to carry, so like that helps, but um, not everybody can carry these. I get that. They also make uh, assisted opening ones, as I'm sure you all are aware. And I'm a big fan of those as well. That way you only have to flick and then uh, the blade will come out. And then if you're living in Europe, you don't need to worry about this, frankly, because you can't carry a firearm. And I'm not trying to laugh at you, but like <laughs> get some balls. And anyway, uh, forget I said that. But yeah, and even if you do um, live in Europe and you're carrying a knife, well, that's going to be on your strong side anyway. So just train, all right? Just train with it a lot. Now, that being said, um, a lot of these clips are set up for a right-handed guy, right? So we're carrying it on our left side. What do we need to think about? Well, this, the way this is going into my pocket, I now, when I'm bringing it out, not only have to bring it out, but I've also got to turn it over and I'm now not operating it with my thumb, right? On the case of a automatic knife, I'm now operating it with my pointer finger. So this is something that you really need to do over and over and over and over again if you expect it to actually work in the heat of the moment. The nice thing about a um, manual like flip out blade is generally speaking, even if the clip is on one side, they will have a double, um, double notches on here so that you can open it with the left hand. So again, that's something to think about when you're selecting your knife. Maybe you don't carry the automatic knife or something like that when you're carrying it on your left side. Maybe you want something with either a button on the left side or um, a notch on the left side. So that is something to think about. Either way, even if you do carry an automatic knife or something with a button on this side, just be prepared and drill that a whole bunch. Literally stand there and just do this. Like do it for like, do it for like a half hour. It increases your testosterone anyway. So like <laughs> definitely do it. Be careful though. Um, another option that we have is a fixed blade. Now, obviously, again, if we're carrying a fixed blade, it will, you'll have to be prepared for this. It will print, okay? Like even with this shirt, a little bit, if you get close enough and you really are looking, you can see a little bit of a print, right? Um, whereas you're carrying a firearm, you do have to worry about that, but that's, again, why guys will carry a little 380 or something, so it's less likely to print. And now with this, you can obviously get it out and access it, and I have to be very careful here again so I don't fucking cut myself because it's a double-sided blade. And again, you see, the, you see the problem here is if this really isn't clipped into your belt enough, and some of them clip better than others, this is just the one I had laying around. I never carry a um, fixed blade knife, but if, if this comes undone, well, guess what? <laughs> Your knife's coming out with your sheath, buddy. So there's a lot to think about. But you can obviously, um, you can access this with two hands. Uh, one, oh, wow. Will, get it together. You can access it with your left hand and, and bring it to bear, just like you would on your battle belt. You can also use one of those um, sock P ones like I have on my battle belt, whatever. Like a fixed blade is a fixed blade. Just drill with it, all right? And again, the nice thing about this too is you can also access it with your right hand if you if you needed to, if you wanted to use the silent option, <laughs> you could do that. Now, another option that we have, and again, I, I, I spoke about this a second ago, is um, deep concealment is a, knife, a nef, whoa, neck knife, okay? And be very careful with this shit. If you're gonna go under your shirt like that, be very careful that you don't cut yourself on, on the way out. Again, you see this very small one, so it's more for slashing than it would be for stabbing. All right, and that's not necessarily something that we want when it comes to get the fuck off of me, mother flower, right? We need something with a little bit bigger of a blade if we're really trying to do that um, threat mitigation damage, so to speak. So those are three options that we do have. And give me a little peep show here, huh? And so, um, but again, we want to be able to access this and fight with this from our left side because Chances are, if we're having to use this, we're already in the grapple. We're already worried about somebody trying to attack our weapon, and we want to be able to keep it holstered in here if we need to, whether that be an appendix, whether that be 
in the five o'clock position and we're really just grappling with somebody. Maybe they don't even know that we have it, but we're in the grapple already and we need to get them off of us. Again, if we're using a knife, like deadly force option, we need to be fucking damn sure that that's something that's appropriate and called for, not only legally, but morally as well. If we think that we can simply push somebody off and say, get back, mother flower, and then boom, boom, bang, then we need to, to boom, boom, bang, <laughs> right? We, we, we are morally justified, not only legally, but we are also morally justified to not do anything that is escalation of force, like too inappropriate. Because you will answer for that, whether it's in the court of law or elsewhere. So be diligent about that. But those are a few considerations that I like to think about when it comes to carrying a knife with a concealed carry platform. And I hate to sound so like nerdy about it, but I'll say it like that. Um, I do encourage you guys not to carry it on your dominant side or carry two. <laughs> if you're already carrying a firearm, like, hey man, what's one more knife gonna do, right? Unless you're really worried about concealment and all of that. But like, if you really wanna carry one on your right side, then carry one on your left side as well, I, I guess, right? Um, or carry a neck knife and a folding knife. But be able to access whatever you're doing without having to come cross body. Because again, like cross body is never good, especially in a close combat situation. Because if you reach across your body like this, I'm going to pin your arm and, and it just makes things easier for me as the attacker and harder for you as somebody defending. So I always recommend that you're able to stay tight and close in a good fighting stance and not having to go across your body to reach things. Um, I hope this helped. I hope this helps somebody out there. I know I got a request to do about the push dagger inside the mag pouch. Dude, I will do that. The thing is, I don't have a push dagger at the moment. I realized that after I said that I'll make a video on it. I don't have a push dagger at the moment. Um, unless you want to pay for me to buy a push dagger, I will absolutely do that. Uh, I'm not asking for your money. I'm just saying like at the moment, um, I, I'm not going to spend the money for a push dagger. But when I do have the funds to buy one, I promise you, bro, I will buy a push dagger and literally make a video about that. So just give me some time on that to get my hands on one. I want one anyway. It's just like I want it. I don't need it. So like I will do that when I can. Um, otherwise I will, I don't know, I'll just, I'll do it like that when I can, when I have the funds to like purchase one and like put it together, I will absolutely do that and I'll push out that video for you. Cause it's cool. Like I'd like to make a video on that anyway. With all that being said, guys, I've already put the website out there for you. I've already, uh, done all our funding requests and everything. So I'm just going to leave you with this. Like when we are carrying a weapon, it's a very serious thing, all right? And like, yes, it's James Bond. Yes, it's like concealed carry is cool. But we have to remember, <coughs> <coughs> excuse me, that this is like life or death. Um, using a knife is like the most serious thing. Using a firearm is like the most serious thing, right? We're talking deadly force. Um, again, I maintain no responsibility for anything. This is all entertainment purposes, but I, I want you to just meditate on this that when we are putting these things together and like planning for this stuff, like we are planning to protect our life and we are planning to protect whoever's li life, lives, whatever lives are around us, whether that be strangers in a grocery store or a other setting, right? Or a mall, or whether that be like you're on an executive protection detail or whatever, or you're literally just defending your life. Like this is deadly serious stuff. So Keep that in mind when you're planning this stuff. Plan for shitty situations to happen that you maybe wouldn't have thought about, right? And so that's why I want you to think about like things like, oh, the knife is the wrong way, or like this will print here, or like this could actually stay in its scabbard, and like I could cut myself on the way out, and like these things will happen when it comes down to it. So we need to be planning ahead for this and like put these things together and, and train with them, literally, literally train with them before everything happens so we can work out all the kinks before we ever need this. That way it comes out smooth and we execute smoothly. Until next time, please remember that you are your first and last line of defense and I will see you in the next video. Thank you guys. Please subscribe, follow, uh, like us, whatever. Cheers, Mother Flower.